Hello, and welcome to today's tutorial about a piece of software called IPython. Um, basically, IPython is a specialized uh, IPython or Python interpreter that you can run from the command line, or even better, it has something called notebooks. And I'll show you how to use these what are notebooks in a minute and the advantages to them. So the first thing, I have a new LXC container here, and I ran some updates and I installed SSH to get into this machine. So now we're going to install some packages to get this machine working. So the first thing I'm going to do is sudo apt-get install python python pip and python dev. A couple packages here. And then we're also going to install the python virtual env wrapper which is the way to isolate um, pip packages on any Linux machine. This way, if you ever need multiple versions of any pieces of software using pip, um, the virtual env wrapper will isolate those. Okay, once this is finished, we're going to just do sudo pip install VN virtual env wrapper. This will take another second. Okay, so sudo pip install virtual env wrapper. And I'll put these all in the notes below. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is activate the virtual env shell script. And the way you do that is you edit your bashrc, so vi tilde, which means your home directory, dot bashrc. Go to the bottom, just shift g and vi, and then you can just do the bottom source, user local bin virtual env wrapper. And you can either load up another terminal which will automatically load this bash rc or you can just do source bash rc and now you'll have this virtual env wrapper commands so the first thing we're going to do is make a new virtual env wrapper and we're just going to call it ipython and now you'll see here that we're isolated to the ipython virtual env wrapper uh, location. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is do a bunch of pip commands and you don't want sudo here because you want to install these, make sure these are installed under this virtual env wrapper here. So it's just pip install juniper which is, uh, I don't know, if it's not juniper, j-u-p-y-t-r, I'm not sure how to even pronounce that, but that's the name of the rebranded ipython stuff now. So if you Google this word or IPython, both of these are the same thing. Uh, they basically just went through a rebranding. You want IPython, and then these are some other packages that are needed in order to make sure IPython works correctly. So let's install a bunch of these. Now why this is going through, uh, some of the advantages to IPython and the IPython notebooks is you get to actually write Python in a web browser and actually get to run it from a web browser as opposed from being at the command line or in a text file. This is a great place to write snippets of code and test it out, make sure it works, and then I actually usually copy paste them into my, you know, into my Python files. Um, the other thing it actually has is uh, great uh, tools for auto-completion as well as um, it does have a lot of extras beyond just Python itself and I'll show you those in a minute. They're actually called magics if you need to learn more about them um, just search IPython magics on Google and tons of hits will come up and you'll see what I mean about magics in a minute. Okay so now we have IPython installed. So IPython is a terminal here too if you want and it's just like a regular you know Python Python terminal but really let's use the web based version so the first thing you want to do and it's, since this is a remote LXC container is we want to tell it to make sure we listen on the IP address of this LXC container so this one's 10.0.3.29. If you're doing this on your local machine, you don't actually need this, and it'll just default to localhost colon 8080. Um, since this is a remote machine, we're going to 
pass it this uh, this command a couple extra stuff so just basically IPython notebook if you're on your local you can just press enter but since this is a remote one we want to tell it what IP address we're listening on so this is how you could install it on a server too and have multiple people access it uh, remotely okay so once it once you run that command it'll give you this link here and load up a web browser and you can just go inside here and now you actually have this is what IPython notebooks look like and they have all types of cool features and I'll basically just show you a basics of them so you just do new Python 2 and up here uh, whoops you can change the name so we're going to do test scripts and it'll always be saving it in the background automatically. Uh, so this is the first input box, and you can actually type Python on here in here. So I can just do first name equals Dan, last name equals So we have some Python here. And now you can just hit this run cell selected below, or you can press control enter, and you'll actually get the output of the Python here. So you can actually do all types of Python in here that you want. So it's really cool that you're able to just write code in here, hit enter, or control enter, and it'll actually put um, put the output right below it. Now if you want another box, you can just do insert below. And I believe even the variables, so once you run this the first time, you have access to the variables here. So you can actually do print my age, and this should work. So yeah, so you can get, so make sure you run this cell first. So you want to hit control enter here, and then you hit control enter here, and it'll actually be able to, so all the variables here are available in the next cell down. So we can even do another one below here and do print first name. Okay. So now for some of the magic stuff that's built in, and this is all beyond Python itself, but you can do like this. You can do ls, and it'll actually tell you it did an ls on the, on the file system. So here is the file that we're currently um, editing and, and modifying, and it's just test scripts um, dot ibynb. So if I actually come back here, go back into our LXC container. Uh, and you'll see this is the script. And this is actually all valid Python code, I believe. So you can actually open up this and see what... Actually, this is not valid Python code, I'm sorry. This is a format of the way uh, IPython will read um, the output, but it's all saved here, so you can automatically load this test.ipynb into any um, any other IPython interpreter, and it'll actually understand it. It's a, a really cool tool. So if I just do, let's say, touch hello world.txt. So now, if I do ls here, I can come back here and do ls here, and just hit Control Enter, and you'll see that. So you can actually have access to the command line stuff here. So like if I just do date, Sunday, August 23rd, and the UTC time. So that's a Python magic. I'm sorry, an IPython magic uh, thing. 
The next thing that's really nice is there is tab completion here, like I said before. So if you just do like import SU and hit tab, you'll see all the the modules that have access to SU or is like OS. There's OS and there's a couple other ones. How about all the ones that start with A? So these are all the imports that start with A. Um, what else is really nice is inspecting and learning about what objects you have here. So if you noticed here, my first name is a string. But if you needed to know that for sure, you can just do first name and then a question at the bottom. And this little window will pop up at the bottom and it'll actually tell you the type of it is a string. It tells you the, what's in it. So my first name is Dan and the length of it is three. It actually tells you some other stuff about the if you actually did like string string object, which I actually did right here to get my age. So since my age is an integer, and if you didn't know that, you can just do my age. And let's delete this one. You'll see this is a int and it's 33. And it actually shows you some other stuff to do. Or the other doc uh, information. So it's actually really cool. So yeah, I did a conversion here from string or for, I'm sorry, from int to string. And that's how you do um, this is another magic inside of IPython. So if you had a, like a list, so you can do my list equals so let's see what, so we gotta run this because it, for example here now if you come down here and try to use my list and run this it's going to say object my list not found because we didn't run this cell yet. So make sure you run the cell before you try to access the object down here. So let's run that. And now when we run this, it'll tell me it's a list and it has all these people in it. So it's actually a really cool feature of IPython is this this question mark. You can do other stuff like for each in my list, print each, and it'll just spit out each of the names and last names. So that's essentially how to use IPython. Um, I probably will make some more tutorials on how to use IPython because there are tons and tons of features here that I haven't even touched on. Um, one of the best features that I've found, if you want to learn more on your own, is if you do file, new notebook, actually you want to do, you go back here, you go new, and I guess today actually is uh, Python 2, and here you can actually have um, markdown, and markdown is basically a way to have notes and other features, and I'll actually show that probably in a future tutorial. If you just search IPython Markdown, you can um, it'll show you all the things. You can actually show it'll you go to the help for Markdown here. I actually show you here too. Like I can copy and paste this special headers here, paste this in here, and then run it. You'll see the largest tag here, and this one's smaller tag down here. And we did that with these special, and this is called Markdown here. So that's always check out this help menu. It has all types of uh, extra stuff in this help. So that's a little example for a future tutorial is uh, the markdown features. Um, another thing that's really cool is GitHub currently supports all Python notebooks at this time. So when you want to upload your markdown or notes and commit them to GitHub, you can actually see all these um, these nice formatted uh, markdown cells inside of GitHub. You can actually send those to coworkers or just publish them on the web for notes, um, which is another great feature that was just added actually to GitHub. So that's how to install IPython. Uh, that's a little bit on how to um, write some test scripts here and 
the only last thing I'll show you to do is to get out of this you can just close these all down you can see it automatically saved everything once I had this you can just close these all down sometimes you'll get the warning that'll say are you sure you want to leave this page this stuff just make sure that you can hit this and just make sure you click save and then 99% of the time the IPython notebook has already saved your work so you don't have to worry about it in case your browser crashes which is happens a lot sometimes so the last thing you can just close out of the browser here and come back here and just control C out of this running server and it'll just say the IPython notebook is running are you sure you want to shut this down and just hit yes and then it'll shut down don't worry about what these kernels are this is basically part of the IPython uh, notebook stuff and you'll actually have your files here that are automatically saved to this um, to this area and now these can be committed to git or even uploaded to uh, github hopefully that's a pretty good start of a tutorial on IPython uh, thanks for watching and please subscribe